Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And today we're going to be looking at restoring this vintage G.I. Joe Snowcat and Frostbite. Now, this was very kindly sent in to me by Grant. It arrived uh, about a month ago all the way from Canada and it's been sort of sitting on my to-do pile. And I finally thought that I've got enough bits that I can actually start making a start on uh, getting this thing restored. As you can see, it's in a pretty dirty state and there's a few areas that are broken that seem to be uh, very common areas to break. And I've still got a couple of bits missing, but I hope uh, during the sort of the restoration process I should be able to uh, find those few missing pieces but in this first episode we're going to get the bulk of this back up and running give it a good clean and try and mend a few key areas so let's take a look at the sort of the vehicle itself and see what's broken and see what needs fixing first up we have frostbite as you can see here it's a fairly worn figure but uh, not in too bad condition some of the paint has uh, been rubbed away there's a few little scratch marks on him and he's a little bit yellowed so I'm going to give him a good clean I will probably touch up the paint on him but I don't think I'll bother fixing the yellowing because it doesn't really uh, sort of do that much to the figure. It looks uh, fine with it. As you can see, I've actually uh, put some binoculars on him I found in a little spares box. I don't have the right gun for him either, but uh, this one is about the right size, so it will do for the moment. I do also have another one of uh, him on the way that I picked up on eBay earlier in the week, so hopefully that will arrive before the end of this first video and we can sort of compare the two. But uh, I think he will fix up quite nicely anyway, just with some sort of paint repairs and a good clean. He's got a bit of red marks or something on there. So yeah, certainly a good clean and that will start to look a lot nicer. Then we come on to the snow cat itself. Now this seems to have some very common issues that I've seen on other people's snow cats. First up, uh, the missile launcher at the back. All of the clips on the back of this have snapped off. In fact, Grant gave me two versions. As you can see, both of them with all the clips missing. So I'm going to work out a way of repairing those. I have a couple of the missiles here, but I actually have a bag of bits that I found up in my loft, uh, which has other pieces of the snow cat in, which I'll show you in a minute. And I've got a few more broken missiles. So I think I need to find two good ones of those. Then we have the sort of uh, the mounting for the uh, missile launch. Again this is broken, there's a bit missing off that end and that seems to be a very common issue as well because again in this little spares bag you can see I have the exact same uh, piece with the exact same piece snapped off it so that's obviously a weak point on this toy. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do at the moment. I'm I think I might end up sort of cutting the other side of this broken one off, flipping it round and making something out of it. So we sort of use two broken ones to make one good version. But I'll sort of see about that once I've uh, taken everything apart. Because uh, I think finding an unbroken one of these is getting harder. So maybe yeah, a combination of two broken to make one good one is the way to go. Uh, we also have on the front uh, the windscreen wiper sort of holding thing is broken. Uh, I don't actually have a windscreen wiper so until I find a windscreen wiper I'm not really sure how that's supposed to fix on anyway. So I might leave that one till the sort of second part of this video. It's missing the steering wheel as well so that I need to find. And then as I say missile wise I do have this bag of sort of bits and in it I just happen to have a couple of uh, other missiles of the small sort but you can see these are quite damaged so I think I should find some replacements for those. That one looks like it's been really chewed it's uh, in a very horrid state. This one is just missing one sort of little uh, flap at the back so that probably do it will just sort of fit and hold in place but yeah that one's in a very sorry state so I need to find some replacements of those and as you can see the whole vehicle is absolutely filthy. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's happened to this. It's obviously been stored in a loft or something for many years. You can see if I take this uh, compartment cover off, that's the top of it, filthy. The underside is actually really clean and white. So I'm hoping if we just clean everything up. Uh, the end result will be it will look quite nice. There's a little bit of sort of minor damage on the front. I can see where these headlights are. It has snapped there and there's also a snap there. It does look like there's a crack in here, like someone's trodden on this at some point. Uh, so I think I will have to fix that from the inside. But overall, the basic part of it is not bad. It's very dirty, but it's uh, certainly fixable. So uh, let's take this apart so that we can give it a good clean. To get this vehicle apart actually is going to be quite straightforward. As you can see, most bits just unclipped. So I've just unclipped the uh, windscreen there. Uh, and to get the body apart, there are two clips. There's one clip at the front there that holds the front section on. And then the back clip is actually this part of the missile launcher. So you can see if I rotate that, uh, that is the clip that holds the whole of the back on. And if we take that off and unclip this front piece, then the vehicle should come apart and it'll be much easier to clean. So uh, let's do that. You can see this panel here on the back as well does unclip. It's just a sort of held on loosely so I can take that off. Now 
we can remove this rear missile launcher section. So I've just got a flathead screwdriver here. I'm going to hold uh, the top of the missile launcher and I'm going to gently push these clips in and sort of pull the clip at the top as well at the same time. So if I pull the launcher and push these in, you've got to do one at a time and sort of work your way around. At some point, they'll clip out of place. There we go, that's it. It just takes a little bit of sort of forcing them, and there you can see that is the missile launcher sort of mounting point taken away. And as I showed you earlier, these both seem to break in exactly the same point. So I'm hoping if I flip that one round, I can cut this section off and make something that is not a perfect match, but it will do the job and we can get this missile launcher back together. But uh, yeah, it's odd that they break in exactly the same way. Anyway, now that is apart. Again, take the screwdriver. I'm just gonna push that onto this clip at the front. And there you go. It's in pieces so we can now get to all the parts. And once it's like this, it's much easier to work with because you can see you can take all the wheels off. And I think that is in as few pieces as need be. I won't take those front wheels off. I don't think there's any need to do that. But I can now clean that piece, clean these. And then this section again, once it's in pieces, you can unclip lots of parts. So we have these sort of little mud guards. Those unclip. I think both of them should come off quite easily. Yeah, there we go. And then the inner side, you can see there are these sort of vents here. I think these are just clipped in. So if we just give that a pull, so that comes out. I can actually remove this little panel here as well. That comes out. And then the lights. I may leave these lights in just because this one at the moment you can see is damaged at the front. There's a crack on that piece and a crack there. I think if I remove these lights, I may end up damaging that more. So I'm gonna leave those in, but everything else now is ready for a good clean. And to clean this, I'm gonna submerge everything in some hot soapy water and use an old toothbrush to work my way around and get all of this grime and dirt out of all of the small sort of nooks and crannies that are all over this place. There's a bit of pen on the front here, which may need a bit of lighter fluid to remove. You can see it's marked that. I think we can get rid of that. Give everything a good clean. I'm also gonna remove all of the stickers off this because they're in quite a sorry state. The ones that should say snow cat on the side. Uh, that's all worn off. I think that will probably require lighter fluid as well. These stickers look really quite old and yeah, they're pretty well stuck on. So let's give this a good clean.
after a very good clean in some hot soapy water and a lot of cleaning with lighter fluid to remove the stickers this is what I'm left with everything is looking a whole lot better even old frostbite here who uh, had sort of red marks on his chest and other sort of dirty patches is starting to look pretty clean he's got a little bit of yellowing as I showed you but uh, overall he's looking pretty nice and then the top section of the snow cat you can see that is actually not looking too bad as well managed to get all of the sticker residue off some of the stickers basically the plastic part of the stickers had been removed and the glue had just sort of been left and gone a very strange yellow color and really sort of hard to get off you had to actually scrape it with a screwdriver to sort of loosen it and then a uh, cotton bud with some lighter fluid on and it's ended up looking like this so overall all the parts are pretty clean and uh, good to go uh, next we've got to start fixing some things P -O -Y -P -O -L -L -O -I. I'm going to start by fixing the base of the gun mount. This is the bit that, that holds the uh, two parts of the snow cat together. As you can see, this was the one that came with the snow cat I've got, and this was the one that I just happened to have in my spares box. And both of them are broken in exactly the same place. So it's obviously a weak point on this side. There's a part that snaps off. So what I'm hoping to do is actually use this one and take parts of this and sort of cut and paste them onto this one. Uh, they're not an exact match. You can see that both sides are completely different, but I'm hoping with a little bit of sort of uh, sort of careful cutting and modifying I can take this section here in fact these pieces do come apart very easily so if I just take that off you can see what I'm hoping to do is take this section and sort of cut and paste it onto there as I say it's not quite a perfect match but I think with some careful cutting we should get something that works reasonably well unfortunately this has not snapped very neatly so there's a big chunk missing there so I'm going to have to do some very careful cutting to try and make this work but uh, yeah I think I can do something so really I'm just going to get on with it I'm not going to talk uh, during this next process I'm just going to sort of do some cutting and modifying and see if I can get it to work you can also see at the end there's supposed to be this little sort of flat disc uh, that holds the top section on so I'm going to cut that off this one and then just stick it onto the end here I think that should be fine but uh, it's this back section that's going to take a little bit of sort of uh, careful cutting let's just get on with it there we go that's uh, the repaired piece I'm actually really pleased with how this turned out it was a little bit fiddly sort of getting the uh, right sort of cuts uh, just because of how this had broken but you can see there was now a join just about there and it sort of fits in with the uh, rest of the sort of uh, the molding I guess of uh, this original piece so you can see there's just a cut line there and a cut line there and I've had to sort of modify the bottom of it because on this side you can see there's this sort of lip that sticks out so I've cut that off and uh, sort of trimmed it down a bit uh, and then I've used some EMA plastic weld to uh, join the two pieces back together plastic weld works very well with this sort of harder plastic I then cut off the missing end piece that was on uh, one of the other sort of spares I had here and I've again EMA plastic welded that onto the end there I've also put a little 
little bit of plastic weld around this joint so these two pieces can no longer be pulled apart um, just because I wanted to give an extra bit of strength to this area because obviously it's a weak point uh, judging by the fact that both of these are snapped at that area so I've joined the two pieces together and I think that should make it a bit stronger but the overall effect is that looks pretty good from the front you can't see because obviously that piece wasn't broken from the back there's just a tiny repair there and the end part is slightly different this uh, larger cylinder should actually extend fully to the end there but I don't think it makes that much difference and by the time we put on the missile launcher part over the top of it you won't even be able to see that so um, yeah that's a really sort of satisfying join it does require two broken versions of uh, this uh, mounting point but that's what I had and that's what I've used to fix this if you don't have two broken versions then I would suggest you know you can find bits of plastic like this this was something that uh, came in a box of shoes I think it was a sort of a, a plastic thing to hold the shoe in shape uh, but you can see it's a pretty much the same sort of diameter as the missing piece so you could make something out of just off cuts of bits of plastic and uh, sort of again plastic weld and some styrene and you can shape something to do the job but in this instance as I had a spare broken one this is what I've been able to make and uh, yeah I think that's pretty good now you know and knowing is half the battle for the actual missile mounting part you can see that it's supposed to be held on by uh, clips on either side so I've actually only got one with one little clip remaining the other side is completely snapped off uh, and I have two different versions of this top section both of which have snapped pretty much in the same way and I can see why this would happen these bits of plastic are pretty thin and uh, plastic like this over time gets very brittle so uh, you know just with age these are likely to snap off and what we're going to do to replace those is actually just use some two millimeter styrene sheet now I have various bits of uh, styrene here and I always keep whatever off cuts that I have whenever I'm sort of working on a project I just stick all the little off cuts in a bag because at some point they're going to be useful so I've sort of dug out a few little bits of two millimeter styrene sheet here and I'm going to make a new clip uh, should be possible I think what we actually have to do is cut away uh, the remains of this top part of the clip so you can see that little lump there I'm going to cut that off so that it's flat to the surface and I can make something and use that area to stick the new piece on and I'm hoping that will be strong enough if it's not I've got space inside to add a bit of sort of reinforcement because actually when you put this onto the mount if I just sort of line this up with what I've got here there is space on the inside you can see there's actually quite a gap between these clips and where the axle sort of uh, attaches to the main body so I think uh, if it works with just a thin piece I'll leave it at that but if it doesn't then I'm going to have to build something that goes on the inside as well but uh, yeah I reckon we can get something that's going to do the job quite nicely um, but yeah just a little bit of practice if it goes wrong I luckily have two to work with so I'm going to start on this one see if it works uh, and if I go wrong make a mistake I will start on this one but I'm hoping I can get this right first time <laughs> a bit of toing and froing later I have managed to make these so you can see they look 
pretty much like the originals. I have made them much thicker. I wasn't sure if they would hold just with a little bit of uh, plastic weld on the outside. And uh, when I did a first test, they didn't hold. So what I've done is I've sort of layered up a couple more bits of one millimeter uh, styrene. So we've got a two millimeter bit on the outside and then two strips of one millimeter. So I've been able to put an extra sort of bit of support on the inside, which doesn't affect uh, how it works when it attaches to this. So on this side, you can see that is the original one, which is quite thin. And then the one I've added is much thicker just to give it that extra bit of support. Now we can try it on uh, the bit that we've already repaired. So there's a little lip on this side. You can see there's just a tiny little tab and that needs to touch onto that because that's what stops this tilting forwards. So hopefully we can just clip this in place like so. And there we go, it works. So we can now raise that back up so we can launch the missiles and then we can drop it back down and it's gonna stay in place quite nicely. These clips, I'm gonna say, are probably fairly strong. I wouldn't wanna play with them too much and sort of move them too much just because it is a fairly thin bit of plastic. Um, it may be I come back to this and make something a lot more sort of sturdy because you can see there's actually quite a lot of space in front here where uh, nothing much goes. So you could actually build a longer panel that came along just to give it an extra bit of support. Same on the back, you could build something that came back a long way even if it was a sort of an angled piece of plastic that sort of gave just that extra bit of support. But for now, that is uh, working quite nicely. At least we can sort of put the missiles in and it will stand upright. So I think, uh, yeah, that, I'm gonna call that piece done. It's all working again. Before I put the plastic weld away, I'm just gonna do a few little repairs on this because I showed you earlier, there are cracks on the front. And actually, if you turn this over, you can see there's quite a crack forming here. Obviously it's been, I was gonna say stood on or something. So it has split a bit. So I'm just gonna put some plastic weld there, mend those bits. And then I will put the uh, main part of this toy back together. I'm gonna to make one final change before I do clip this back together. And that is just to file down this little clip at the front because this is getting old and the plastic is getting brittle when you push these things together lots of stuff has to bend and flex and I want to reduce the amount this piece has to bend just by a little bit so I've just got a file here I'm going to take the edge off that uh, this will help it just sort of survive being put back together and if I need to take it apart again it will make it that little bit easier there you go, it really is just a minor bit to take off, but it just means that when we clip that back together, that clip doesn't have to push so far. So we can now put all the pieces back together. There are these little sort of mud guards that have to clip on the front here. So we just push those on, like so. We've got two of those, so there's the other one for the other side. Then we have the little windscreen that goes in the top here goes around there, clips in place, nice and easy. We've got some vents, that, again, that just go on the inside. And those, again, all clip in. It's quite a clever design, this toy, the fact that everything just sort of clips together. It means that there's no glue or anything or no screws holding these pieces on. So that's basically all the pieces on the top. So we can now put that clip, line everything up, make sure it all sits. And then, yeah, that clip at the front, that's the one I'm worried about. So I'm actually going to just sort of gently push it in place so that that clips on. That's holding nicely. Then we can take the bit that we've repaired, which is the missile launcher section. I'm just going to take the top part off and that should clip in the back. Push that down and that holds the back section in. And there you go. That's all starting to work come together quite nicely. We're actually getting a vehicle that's working. So we have the little engine cover that goes in there. We have the uh, back section, which I think, if I remember rightly, just sort of clips over like that. Then we have the skis on the side. Yeah, starting to uh, feel pretty good and pretty sturdy. Now, the, with the missiles, I did show you earlier, I've got two that are sort of perfect. One that is mildly broken and one that's really chewed up. I've actually ordered one online now, so that will turn up before the uh, next part of this video gets filmed. In the meantime, I'm just going to clip in the three that I have. So uh, yeah, that one is on order. Managed to find that on eBay pretty cheaply. Uh, so that's an easy piece to find. We've got these little side missiles that clip on here and then one on the other side. As I say, it's actually starting to feel like quite a sturdy vehicle again now. And uh, I do also have the stickers on order. I've uh, bought those from a place called Toy Hacks. I've 
bought uh, stickers from them before so those are all ordered and will be along again before the next video. I do also have a couple of these windscreens. This was the one that uh, Grant sent me as you can see it's pretty yellowed. Then I have this version which is not so yellowed but unfortunately uh, the edge pieces have been bent. You can see they're quite badly damaged. Uh, I think in the next video I'll see if I can try and fix those a bit and maybe bend them in. In the meantime I'm going to put this one in place. Again it's missing the windscreen wiper that's something I still do need to find. I still need to find the steering wheel and then I've got to work out a way of reattaching the windscreen wiper but for now I will put that one in place as well just so that this vehicle looks a bit more complete. But it's starting to feel pretty reasonable. We'll also deal with uh, frostbite in the next video. So as you can see it does look an awful lot better than uh, when we first started uh, getting this toy up and running again. Just giving it a good clean and removing the sort of dirty and damaged stickers really makes the uh, main part of the toy look pretty nice. And getting this missile launcher back and working that was the sort of biggest challenge I could see with this uh, because every one I've looked at seems to have this piece broken and as you can see with a little bit of work managed to get something that does the job. For the next video as I say I'm waiting on the missile to arrive that I've ordered the stickers and another version version of frostbite and I hope in the meantime also to be able to find some more of the missing pieces and we can get to work on the cockpit as well. Get that all working, get that windscreen wiper working and if I can't find a steering wheel I think maybe a bit of Lego or something will do the job. Uh, I'm not quite sure at the moment, I'll have to see what I can find though. Something may just look the part and do a, a sort of a reasonable stand-in job for what that steering wheel should be. And if you have any of the pieces I'm missing then do, please do drop me a line. I'm happy to trade and maybe we can work something out and get this snow cat all finished. So I do need to say a massive thank you to Grant for very kindly sending in the remains of a snow cat to work on. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.